Adam Torres's role within Ruby has been a pivotal one in more ways than just one. From being a constant shadow that looms over Blake to causing Yang's fire to burn out, there are many characters that have a bone to pick with the mask-wearing swordsman. But Adam's existence has shaped the course of not only our characters, but for the entire Faunus race. Welcome everybody, my name is Eruption Fang, and in this video we are going to be discussing the beast to Blake's beauty, Adam, and how he's almost single-handedly saved the Faunus. Even in current day, the Faunus are still very much discriminated against. So much like anything, before we delve into Adam himself, we need to know where everything began with the Faunus. As explained in the world of Remnant, Faunus had existed for just as long, if not longer, than humans themselves. The discrimination towards their kind took no time at all as their animalistic features struck fear into the early humans. Rumors and stories began to spread about them out of terror and suspicion. During this time period, it was common for the Faunus to be chased out of village as well as hunted down and killed. Exceptions were of course made as they only look like animals so there were people who befriended them. Just not many. The Grim were actually what brought the two races together for the first time. In the village of Sanus, the two worked together to help and defend the village. It was here that humans began to learn that the Faunus shared a lot in common with them. They weren't these scary, horrific monsters like the rumors and stories spoke of. They were mostly like them. While a step in the right direction, the two were still far from equals. The Faunus were finally no longer kept at arm's reach, they were brought in only to be exploited and used as a labor force. The Faunus now faced a new form of discrimination towards their kind. Things varied from kingdom to kingdom, but the common thread through them all were none of them were considered equals. Fast forward a bit and we reach the Great War. The Faunus' role in this is unspecific. We don't even know if they had a role in it in the first place. Anyway, after the war had ended, everyone, and I mean everyone, was desperate to ensure that nothing like it were to happen again. They all needed change. One of the compromises that was made was giving the Faunus equal rights. Before, it was nothing more than a handshake and a nod saying that they were equals. But now, each of the leaders had officially acknowledged their existence. As an apology, they had gifted them the island of Menagerie, which acted as a safe haven for Faunus, which some accepted and others disliked. The White Fang was then formed, originally as a symbol. It was meant to signify the unity between them and man. Unfortunately for the Faunus, however, the discrimination did not stop. This caused the White Fang to no longer be used as a symbol, but rather as a voice. They held mass rallies, boycotts, and protests. The White Fang was there to show the world that they did not tolerate their discrimination anymore. So now that we've caught up to the modern day, we can finally begin to talk about characters. There have been three leaders that we know of so far, so let's go through them in order. The first and oldest leader that we know of was Gira Belladonna. Blake's father. From our understanding, he was an incredibly peaceful leader. The aforementioned protests, rallies, and boycotts were his way of going about things. They were all very peaceful in an attempt to show the humans how civilized the Faunus were while also standing firmly for their cause. Unfortunately for everyone, the methods of attempting to gain peace and equality didn't work. Gira eventually stepped down from his position as leader and handed it over to Sienna Khan. Sienna had many of the same ideals as Gira and had the Faunus' best interests at heart, which is why she was made his successor. Despite having the same goal, Sienna had different tactics in mind. Amongst the Faunus who wished to take a more aggressive approach to their cause, Sienna was one of them. She would crash the peaceful protests with violence, set ablaze stores which refused to serve Faunus, and sabotage businesses that used Faunus labor. This newfound leadership was something that many of the Faunus agreed with. They were finally getting results as well as getting a bit of revenge for the past in the process. Now, a noticeable change was happening. The humans begun to treat the Faunus as equals, but as Blake explained, it was mainly out of fear. But where does Adam play into all of this? You see, Sienna, despite her aggressive and violent methods of going about things, there was a limit to it. She agreed and basically started the new White Fang, but she would never do anything that would hurt the cause. Any action that would do more harm than good. As stated, Sienna still did have the Faunus' best interests in mind. Which is why she didn't like Adam. Where Gira is pure peace, Sienna fell right in the middle, while Adam is pure violence. Sienna, while she approved of the violent acts, she didn't approve of what Adam was doing. 
bringing the White Fang's name into the Fall of Beacon and subsequently wanting to invade Haven. Acts like this drag the Faunus' name through the mud. They harmed the cause they were fighting for in the end. All it did was justify the humans' hate for Faunus by doing these things. On top of that, involving themselves with Salem's group is a lose-lose from all scenarios. Sienna wanted to be feared and respected. She didn't want war with them. And this is where Adam comes in. As Blake described, Adam doesn't want equality. He wants people to suffer for what he feels the world did to him. If he had it his way, the humans would be nothing more than servants to the Faunus. This mentality and feeling that Adam expressed is something that many of the other Faunus rallied behind. Adam's nature to get results put him as the very obvious leader that many wanted. This eventually led Adam to killing Sienna so he could take the seat as high leader for himself and run the show how he wanted. And it's this exact violence and hate-filled aggression he has for humans that is saving their species. Despite the fact that current day Adam doesn't seem to want equality anymore, it's the exact thing he's being a catalyst for. The fact that there isn't a line that Adam won't cross allows the humans to face the exact thing that they don't want. The humans never faced a Faunus who was willing, and more importantly, capable of slaughtering them. Taking down academies, borderline starting a war, this is something that Adam brought to the table that was never done in history. There had been plenty of different individuals throughout time that had reached out for peace, but Adam appears to be the lone soldier who's gone this far. Sienna had aggression and got results, but there was a line. Get rid of that line, and you have Adam. Because of his complete disregard for human life, they have begun to see that they don't want that. They don't want to be slaughtered and enslaved. They don't want done to them what they did to the Faunus. Blake has gone back to pushing peace, and this time, it's working. Peace hasn't worked since the beginning of their species, so what happened? Adam happened. He was one of the first Faunus to advocate using violence. He's taken violence to a whole new level and continues to escalate it. So when the humans weigh the options, which one would they want? Peace or war? They'd want peace. That's why now Blake's push for equality seems to be working when it never did in the past. Without Adam, Blake's current cause never would have worked. Despite the fact that many of the everyday Faunus took a stand against Adam, we know that there are still those who are willing to follow his lead. Adam is more than confident that the White Fang, with the help of Salem's forces, are more than capable of winning a war. His forces may have taken a small hit, but the plan should still be in full effect. His attitude has no reason to change, and if anything, the end of Volume 5 made him even angrier. Adam's complete hatred for the humans has painted a pretty clear picture for the future on both sides. Adam may never have wanted equality for his kind, we don't know. But the cruel irony may be that with his involvement now, equality's never been closer. With that said, that is going to do it for this video. What do you guys think? I know Adam may not be the most well-liked character in the series, but do you believe that he is indirectly bringing the Faunus closer to equality? Or do you think that everything would have been better without him? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. Consider becoming a sponsor over on Patreon. You get all the content early, and it really does help out the channel. Be sure to follow me on all social medias, and I'll see you in the next video.